Disability insurance is something we hope we'll never need, but it can be a huge help if you're unable to work due to an injury or illness. With more, we're joined by CTV News' Chief Financial Commentator, Patty Lovett-Reed. And Patty, good to see you. I, I was looking mm -hmm. at your notes in this recent RBC survey that, that says half of us are not prepared to be off work for disability reasons, and that is staggering. So let's delve into this and look at why people should consider it. Well, there are statistics in the industry, Marcy, that are often thrown out. For example, a 30-year-old, and I quote, has four, is four times more likely to be disabled before the age of 50 than dying. And one in six before the age of 50 will be disabled and unable to go to work for at least a three-month period. And again, it's one of those things you already highlighted. It. It's a probability factor. We think it'll happen to someone else. It won't happen to us, but it could actually happen to you. And there are two main options. There's long-term disability and then there's critical illness, Patty. What is the difference between the two? Well, long-term disability will provide you with an income for a period of time and that could be two-thirds of your income it could be half of your income you really need to understand it you're not likely ever going to get your full income because some in the industry have told me there's got to be an incentive to try to get back to work most people trust me want to get back to work but one provides a long-term uh, payment income stream for you the other is often a lump sum payment associated with a specific illness now if you only have enough money for one and it can't be both then most people tend to opt for the long-term disability because it's a little more all-encompassing. So when it comes to purchasing disability insurance, what are the keys? What should people know? Well, I think when you're looking at it, one, you want to know exactly how much you're going to get paid. Don't make an assumption. So as I just alluded to, it could be two-thirds, it could be half. You may qualify for a certain period of time. Then there's often what we call the elimination period. This is where you need to have that emergency fund already sort of tucked away because a payment won't be made in some cases for a 90-day period. And then what about the cost of living? You could be off for a period of time. And again, look into that very closely. Are you going to be paying paid for two years, five years, or right up until maybe you're 65, and that's where the government benefits kick in. But you want to make sure that you know exactly what it is you're covered for. There's also something called owner occupation, and that is if I were to become disabled, but I may be qualified to do something else, but not the job I was once doing, does that mean I come off disability? You can get a waiver. You may have to pay a little more, but you want to know exactly all the bells and whistles here. Yeah, and listening to all that you're saying, you really need to do your due diligence. You really need to do your research to figure out uh, which route is best for you. And you see, that's the thing, because there are so many details, and it's not one size fits all. And I can also tell you, can you have too much insurance or not enough insurance? Looking at that RBC survey, what they said there, even with the disability uh, coverage, 29% still had to dip into their savings, 17% took on more debt, and 9% had to borrow from family and friends. So it's one of those things, you can't get it when you're, out, when you're in it. It's something you have to think about before. And sure, it's best if never used, probably money well spent if never used, but at least it's there if you need it. Patty, thank you so much. Thanks, Marcy. As always, you can read more from Patty in her blog. That's at canadaam.ctvnews.ca.